Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about patching files in C++. So I'm going to begin by covering some very bare bones code just for the people who are already experienced with this topic, but if you don't understand, don't worry, we're going to dive into the details in just a few minutes. Our target for this demonstration is this simple hello world program, and we're going to patch it to say hello patch. Now we could just patch the source file, but that wouldn't be as fun, so we're going to actually compile this to an executable. And if we execute that, we can see that it prints hello world. Before anything else, I include IO stream for outputting to the console and F stream for file manipulations. So down in our main function, we first declare a file stream object, and then we open our executable within it. The first argument that we pass to the file stream open function is the path of our file. In this case, it's a relative file path to our hello world binary. Next, we pass in our mode flags. In this case, I want to be able to read and write to the file and open it in binary mode rather than text mode. Next, we're going to read and print out the original value. So first, we just print some leading text, and then we're going to read and print the bytes in this file using this function I wrote here. The first argument that we pass to our readbytes function is the address of our file stream object, followed by the offset of the bytes that we want to read and the length of the bytes that we want to read. The offset can be fairly easily retrieved by using a hex editor like HXD. So if we open our binary and we press Ctrl F and search for hello, we can click on the first letter of world, which is what we want to replace, and we'll see that that corresponds to this byte here. If we right click this byte and press copy offset, then we're good to go. And in this case, the length 5 corresponds to every byte in the string world. Now if we step up into read bytes, the first thing that we do is call the file stream's seekg function. The arguments we pass to this function are the offset and this flag right here. The flag tells the function to start at the beginning of the file, and it will set the current position at this offset. Next, we allocate space for a new C string and insert our null terminator. Then we call the file stream's read function with the arguments buffer and length. This function will read bytes of length at this position into our C string. Finally, we print the buffer that we read followed by a new line and free the memory that we allocated for the C string. Now let's return back to our main function. And the next thing we do is create a new C string. These here are the bytes for the string patch. And then we call the patch bytes function that I've written. And this also takes the address of our file stream object, along with the offset that we want to write the bytes to and the bytes that we want to write. If we step into the patch bytes function, we see it's very similar. Once again, we use seekg to move to that offset from the beginning. And then we call the file stream write function with the arguments bytes and the length of the bytes that we want to write. This will write every byte in the string to the file at that offset. If we return back to our main function, we now print patched, and then we repeat this call up here and hopefully it will print the patched string to the console. Finally, we close our file stream and exit the function. Now, if we build this, copy our hello world binary into the output directory, and execute our patcher, we can see that it seems to have patched our binary, and we can verify that by running it. And mission success. All right, now if you're still with me, there's two things that I think really throw people off about file patching. And that is first the flags that we're passing into the open function of the file stream and the file streams read, write, and seek G functions. So starting with the easier of the two, the file streams open flags are just hex constants defined in the standard library, and the pipe separating them is the bitwise or operator. We can break this statement into steps to better understand it. First, we'll replace the constants with their true defined value. Next, we'll convert these hex values to their binary equivalent, and then we'll perform this bitwise operation. It's easier to process the result if we convert it back to hexadecimal, and now we have the final result that is actually passed into this function. The flag is actually only one argument, and each possible variant is handled in the library. So now let's talk about read, write, and seek g. 
By far the most confusing part of using file streams is that the file stream has a current position. We set this position using the seekg function. In this example, we're telling the file stream object to move this position this far into the file from the beginning. With the position set, both reading and writing are trivial. With the read function, we're telling the file stream to read this many bytes from the file into here. With the write function, we're telling the file stream to write this many bytes from here into the file. So if all of that was just a bit too much for you, or you just don't feel like implementing this yourself, I've written a very basic library of sorts that abstracts away loading the file and reading and writing bytes. The source for this can be found over at guidedhacking.com, attached to this video's thread, and a link to that will be in the description of the video. And the major difference here is that our read function returns a char vector instead of a char array. So you can use this wherever you need it in your code, and you don't have to worry about cleaning up after yourself. And this is just the code using the library that uh, does the exact same thing that the first snippet did, but it's a little more condensed and clean. So if we go ahead and build this, and I've already got our hello world program in this directory, if we execute the file patcher, we can see that the result is identical. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be much appreciated, and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalog of content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.